this is a big change in content for me, but it's something that I want to do. Today, we are going to be starting a Slackware course. I've been using Slackware for about a week now. I love it. Got me a too. I loved Slackware. It's very light. It's, you know, good. See all this distribution. But you have to resolve dependencies yourself, which most people hate. Today, we're going to be going over exactly how we're going to install it on a UEFI system. You ready? We are going to see now our root directory. Or right, I'm doing this for uh, my computer. It's a virtual machine. You're gonna want to get the ISO off of Slack's website. Shouldn't be too hard to find and it'll be the install DVD. I'm going to run Slack install.sh and it'll launch a virtual machine for Slack install. We're gonna launch with this huge kernel right here. All right, here we go. I'm going to full screen this, and then right here, select the keyboard key map one US, and then press one again. Now we're ready. I'm log in as root, root like this. I'm gonna go CF disk, and we have three disks here. We're gonna, most people do anyway delete them, you know, create a new partition, we're going to do 500 megabytes, it's going to be our EFI space, our type, it's going to be EFI system, and then here, we're going to make a 4 gigabyte swap partition, that's recommended size, swap, and then this last one, we're going to use all the space here, and it can be Linux file system. We're going to right click yes to write. Then we're going to quit. Clear. Now we can type setup and it'll start the Slackware installation. And then in here, you can see we got to go to add swap because we already did our keyboard layout. Click. And then it'll show our swap partition. Make sure that you put those labels on it when you're using CF disk. Would you like to check for bad blocks? If you're using old hardware, you might want to if you're using modern hardware. Do not. <coughs> and we'll add this to our FS tab. And then this is our root partition. We are going to do that. Format it. EXT4. That's what uh, most people use these days. Just do it for right now. If I system partition recognized, adding, adding it. Would you like to install from USB stick? You will be installing from USB stick. I have an ISO and a QME system, so I'm going to use a CD. And in here, we have various applications that do not need X. The new Emacs. You're going to uncheck the new Emacs. Uncheck frequently asked questions list. And then I don't want KDE. And then. If you want, you get just the desktop that you think you're going to use. Mine, I'm going to use XFCE, the cholesterol free desktop environment. And then right here, select prompting mode. Like full, but display one line per package during install. We're going to do that. And it's going to install all these packages, and I will leave my mic off while this goes. I just want to make sure that my mic works, so I am going to come back here. Yep, we're good. <clears throat> but sometimes it doesn't. Huh. Click no to making a USB boot stick. 
click no to installing Lilo and click no to installing eLilo. Okay, hold on. There we go. I had to move. Right here, uh, you won't get this. I think it's just a virtual machine, but if you do, you more than likely have USB mouses. VMs have PS2 mouses. Enab Excuse me. Enable GPM. Yeah. Configure the network, of course. The host name, Black Force. That's what I'm going to name this. The domain, example.com. Or if you have a real dom domain name, put it in there. Click no. Use network manager. Right here, these are things that you might want to start by default. Uh, I'm fine with what they got here. I'm just going to add. Uh, actually, no, we don't need that server. Let's see if SSH is here. I might want to. SSH into it. Okay, let's do this. I'm going to try out some custom screen fonts. If you like custom screen fonts, I'm going to move the mic. Okay. If you like custom screen fonts, then click yes. If you don't, no. Set the hardware clock to UTC. US Eastern. <laughs> it, it literally just like threw me all the way back, all the way down to the bottom. Hey, excuse me, we're gonna have to go all the way back up here. Make sure you get your right time zone though. You want to make sure so it doesn't mess up. Vim. Elvis, NVI, whatever you want to use, Vim for me. Choose the desktop environment that you installed. XFCE is mine. No root password detected. Make it. It's one for the example in this tutorial. Make it an actual good password. Click cancel on the Slackware setup. Do not reboot. Don't reboot. Please don't. We're going to true into our slash MAT and we want our shell to be dash. We're shrewded. You may not know, but look, we're in, we're in a true. We're going to install our target is going to equal x x86 uh, 64 EFI our boot loader ID is going to equal grub and our EFI direct three is going to be equal to slash boot EFI. Do not type just slash dev slash SDA. You need to type it exactly how it is put here. Install it, it'll install just fine. Now we're gonna MK DIR slash T make them precursively slash boot EFI capital EFI capital EFI. Boot. like that you want to make that directory once you make it you want to copy the slash boot efi efi grub grub x64 to boot efi capital efi boot and then name it boot x64 dot efi like this after you do that do those steps grub should be completely set up and you can boot into the system. I am now going to control or exit the shroot and reboot. Reboot. Just to make sure that all the processes are sent. Okay. Everything's been unmounted. I'm going to run slack course.sh and it should boot me into an actual slackware install. Here we are. Should take a minute if it doesn't if it doesn't let us do it then we mess something up see that means we mess something up it happens go to the slack install.sh again load back into the ISO okay the first time I installed Slackware, it didn't work well either. So what we're going to do is we're going to 
gonna set our key map again. Log in as root. And then we're gonna mouse slash dev slash sda1 to slash boot. Slash ef5. Boot ef5. So it's. Oh, I forgot to put slash. slash mnt boot ef5. Does not exist, so we're gonna. MK is a DIR slash P M T boot EFI. It's made. Now we're gonna mounts slash dev slash SDA one to slash M T boot EFI. Then we're gonna swap on slash dev slash SDA two. We're gonna mount slash dev slash SDA three to slash M T. Clear. Now we can reshoot back into M T with been bad. And I think I forgot to source our profile. So I say see profile. That could have been the reason, but more than likely it's not. You see, we're back in here. We're going to reinstall Grub. One thing I did forget to make the Grub config. That's what I just realized. Target is going to equal x86 64. The bootloader ID is going to be equal to grub. And then the EFI directory three is going to equal slash boot EFI. We're going to reinstall grub. It says no such file or directory. Boot EFI doesn't look like a Open. We're gonna go ahead and grub and take config dash o is boot grub grub up cfg. It did find the generic kernels here. Grub should work. So for that case, we are gonna try this. Remember, it's always—it's not gonna work your first time around. Never gonna work first time around. Just try these steps. Sometimes they work, sometimes they do not. Okay, I am going to re-do this install, and I'll be right back with y'all. It should work for y'all though. Okay, so I installed Slackware. You know, it's fully installed. So I'm going to see you back in my root folder, uh, see in my slack course folder, and run the slack course sh, and you can see, finally got the grub thing to work. Just make sure to make your grub config, of course. Um, don't be like me. You'll see your penguins in the system will boot up with a sysv style uh, startup. I am going to move back here. Hold on, I'm moving. <laughs> okay. We're going to log in as root with the password we set. We're going to clear the screen. And then we're going to start X. It'll launch the window manager DE that you set for your start X. Here. Set mine here. Web browser. I open the web browser in one. We're gonna open this terminal emulator in the other. Okay. In here we have a few things to do. We gotta go to slackbuilds.org. Dot org. And then we gotta look for FBO UI. FBO UI. It requires a dependency called libconfig. And then we have to download this tar.gz file. The first thing that we're downloading. 
and then we're gonna download the Slack build Tor.gp. Oh, we have both of those things installed now. We're going to cd into the downloads folder where both of those things should be. First, let's achieve a true root, and then let's go back into the downloads. We're gonna tar SVPF, then the the uh, Slack build, which is the config dot tar dot gc now we're going to move the libconfig dot one or one one seven two tar dot gz to our libconfig folder that it made cd into that libconfig folder and then in here we are going to build our first package we're going to run the slack build and it is going to make that file. It's going to compile it. Fair enough. It's just going to compile this from the source code here. And of course, you got pulse uh, volume here, pulse audio, and notifications. This is. A D, a full function of D. And in here, we need to CD to our temp folder. And in here, there, it will be a TGZ file. We want to install PKG slash temp and then the lib config. Make sure you put the temp in there. Now it has been installed. Package lib config has been installed. If you want, you can arm RF the lib config. Or you can make a GitHub repository with all of the pre-compiled stuff. Now, we're going to go out and finally download this SBOUI. Download the Slack build. Download the tar.gz for the source. Now we got both of those. We're going to CD into our downloads. So it would be root downloads. And then we're going to tar SVPF. FPOUI dot tar dot gz and then we're going to move FPOUI 2.2 to our FPOUI folder see in our FPOUI folder run the slack build like before you'll eventually get used to this but what we're installing right now is a thing that does this for you we're going to see into our temp we're going to install pkg temp SBO UI. And that program's installed. Now we're going to finally get the last thing that we need, and it's not on Slack builds. This is a pre compiled binary, which is easy to install. So we're going to SBO PKG. Look up SBO PKG. Right here, package. A pre built version is right here. So we're going to grab this, click copy right here, click copy link. Then and then in here, we want to go and we want to uh, wget and then this tar.gz. And then we're going to install the package in our temp, then sblpkg. And then that, that's installed, we're in sblpkg. This automates the process for you. So let's say we want to install something like i3 here. Let's do. Neo fetch. It's not there because we're looking for package builds only in our current version. And Neo fetch is not in the current version, it's in a pre compiled binary on their website. Let's say we want to install. Let's open this. Go to Slack builds. Slack builds. And in here, the repository. Let's see. What do we see if. 7 plus, let's just install this, 7 plus, and if there's dependencies for it, it will be in here. But if we go to Slack build search, make sure it's 415, you can see nail fetch is in here. Let's go for LUA, Lua, the Lua programming language. 
type in Lua and then it'll be in here. What we need to do first is sync with the remote repository, so make sure to do that. And I'm going to take a bite of my food. Okay, now the sync has been complete. Like I said, it needs to sync with that. Now we're going to go out. I didn't know this video would turn into a mukbang, but I'm eating. So we're going to look for the Lua programming language, and boom, now we got the Lua programming language. Click, go down to process. Download, build, and install. Click start, and it'll build it. And I'm going to take another bite because I like food. Okay, it's done. And then that program is now installed. Before we go, we're going to install two more packages and I'm going to show you how to remove one. We're going to pip slack pkg remove lua, which is what we got. It says this seems to be the first time you've used slack package, so slack package update. You know, I have any mirrors selected. We got them because we selected it. Go to Etsy Slack Packages and Mirrors. Get the mirror. Whatever mirror you want. There's a bunch of mirrors. Choose which one you want to use. Choose one that is fastest or closest to you. I'll just use Slack Builds because I'm, I want to hurry this up. Slack Package Update. Run the Slack package update and it will start running that command. And it will start updating. It says it's unable to get the GPG key, so let's rerun this command. Do you want to import the GPG key from this source? Click yes when it pops up or just type capital letters yes if you get this error. Yes. Like this, and it'll just, you know, do a few things. Okay. <laughs> I'm eating. Like, once again, so. If my mouth sounds kind of, you know, full, it is. Okay. You're not going to have a fast internet connection like this, but, um, it'll do whatever it needs to. Now, we can slack package all we want to. We can go slack package remove, and then Lua's package we were talking about. It will remove it. And boom. The last thing we're going to install is pre-compiled binaries from Slackware. pkgs.org. .org. That's where we're going to find our packages. Type in neofetch here. I would bookmark this website in case you need it. You know. Down to Slackware 15, there's a .txz file. Or is it from your computer network, please? It's because I've been here. I've been here a few times. But you can see if I open this link in a new tab, something should work. But like I was saying, you should be able to grab it. It's because I've been here, and then you do the exact same thing.
It's because you do the exact same thing, you know. And if you want to go to packagesslackonly.com, you can see there is a Neil Fetch file here too. We can copy this link. Never mind, we can't. Let's look somewhere else. Neil Fetch TXT. You will be able to get it off that website though. Like, you will be able to get it off Slackware packages. But Slackware mirrors, we should be able to grab one here. Download file. Some 13 mirrors. Let's just get it from this Indiana mirror. No, it won't. Let us. Really, you just go into your. Uh, Temp folder and install package and then the directory to that package, of course. But, just make sure that you do it properly or else it won't work. But, with that, I would like to conclude this video. I hope you guys did enjoy the first part of our Slack course. It was pretty fun in my opinion. I will see you guys next time.